Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming today. Um, we're really pleased to. Uh, have our second series in the planning to stay home when you're not feeling great um, and this series is, is titled there's no place like home um, and we are really delighted to have Arthur Bergeron here again with us from Mira O'Connell. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much I appreciate it and thanks to the folks uh, here at the Clinton Senior Center for inviting us to come my name is Arthur Bergeron I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell Myrick O'Connell is a large firm there are 52 lawyers one of the most famous ones lives here in Clinton Bob Gibbons it was your town council. Um, I, down the, I'm down the hall from the distinguished Bob. There is somebody, and, and with, because there were so many lawyers, there is somebody there that does pretty much everything. This is what I do, is I do elder law, and I try to focus on these set of issues. Um, the purpose of this series is to really talk to the fact, most of my clients, often clients will come to me, and they talk to me about, oh my God, they're worried about nursing homes. What do we do we're worried about nursing homes? But of course, that's exactly what nobody wants to do, right? Nobody wants to end up in a nursing home. People really want to stay home. Uh, and so the purpose of this series is to kind of talk about really the variety of programs that there are to help you and to help other seniors really stay at home. And last time we really, we talked a lot about, we, and we talked about Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary are my make-believe couple. Um, they have, um, and they have a daughter, Ann, and they have a house that's worth $300,000. He has an IRA. It's worth 150. They have joint uh, uh, an annuity worth 100,000, and they have bank accounts worth 75. He's on Social Security. Frank's getting thousand dollars a month in Social Security. Mary is getting 600. They're living close, right? But they're going to be okay. They've paid their mortgage. They've got their biggest bill is their taxes. They're going to be okay unless they end up with serious medical problems. Um, and so in the first presentation, we just talked about, so what programs are available really through the Senior Center, through a number of other organizations to help you deal with those issues. We also introduced uh, Montachusett, um, which, which is the, the and, and Joyce Ryan is here from Montachusett, which is the ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point, which is the, the state is divided into areas, uh, and each one is served by an ASAP. Uh, they are nonprofit entities that contract with the state to deliver your state money back to you, really. They are, they are funded by the Department of Elder Services, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. They, they really help um, to deal with programs, federal and state programs, that are available at this level. So one of the purposes of these presentations is to really acquaint you with these players. So that's Frank and Mary. The problem is Frank has fallen and can't get up. So what happens? We're going to kind of talk that out. Um, and when I get them home, I'm going to ask Joyce to talk to you about, a bit about how the ASAP and how programs that, are, that the ASAP works through can help Frank. Uh, but let's just talk about that. So what to worry about uh, if Frank is headed to the hospital? First of all, how long can he stay? Um, and, and, and is he getting better? And can he get home? Uh, who's paying? There are a whole set of questions. What drugs does he need? What is the discharge plan? So um, one of the things for Frank to remember um, when he is at the hospital and kind of the first thing that you want to be checking if you end up here at Clinton Hospital. And by the way, I'm kind of a, aware of these issues. I wear another hat. Um, I'm on the, the Board of Trustees at Marlboro Hospital, which is another one of the hospitals in the UMass system. So I hear about this problem a lot. So your first issue is um, are you being admitted to the hospital? Is, if Frank is there, is he there and is he being admitted? Um, and the reason why I mention that is that, that over the last several years there has been a tremendous push by Medicare to keep people who are in the hospital from getting admitted to the hospital. They're staying instead on observation. 
Uh, that's the term that you're going to hear. And one of the important parts about that is that you, if you are, if you are if, if from the Medicare's perspective, they love that because you're, you're, sit, you're lying there in the same bed in the same hospital, but if Medicare says it's observation, that means Medicare is paying the hospital about one-third or one-quarter what they would if you were there uh, in a, on a regular stay. So it is important to know um, how you are, where you are and whether you have really been admitted to the hospital. Um, one of the reasons for that is that if you are discharged from the hospital, not directly home, but to a rehab facility, if you have been in the hospital admitted for at least three days, then Medicare is going to pay for your stay in the rehab facility. If you have not been there for three days, then Medicare um, won't or will pay only a piece of it and you're going to have a big copay. So you want to know about that. One other thing related to that, um, before the hospital, when can you go home? Before the hospital can discharge you, um, if you are uh, over 65, anybody here over 65, right? So if you're over 65, then before, <laughs> then before the hospital can discharge you, they have to give you a plan showing that they're going to discharge you, saying why, and you have, to, and you have the right to appeal that decision. Most people don't know that. They have to give, they're going to give you a signed document, and you have the right to appeal the decision. Um, who do you hire to appeal that decision? We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but the general answer is not me. You don't want to be hiring lawyers in that situation, because lawyers don't read medical charts and know what the heck any of that's, that is about. But we're going to talk about that in a little while. So if you're at the hospital, if you're in the hospital, Medicare is going to be paying. They may be paying the hospital, as I mentioned, at various rates, but Medicare is going to be paying. Um, what drugs do you need? One of the things you need to understand if Frank is going to the hospital, it's really important, you have to keep up your current list of drug meds. Because when you get to the hospital, you can't take the meds with you. They're not going to allow you to use your meds in the hospital. They're going to take, they're going to, the doctor there is going to prescribe you. They may be the same meds, but they're going to come from the hospital's pharmacy so that they can know that things haven't expired, etc. But if they don't know when Frank gets to the hospital what those meds are, that's when trouble can happen. We see that a lot at the hospital. The time that there are medication errors, a lot of times, or it, it is when, when you've got someone coming in and so they're prescribing something because of what Frank is there for and they don't know that it's going to have an adverse effect because of something else that Frank is taking when he's at home, right? So there are a whole set of issues when you get to the hospital. Um, the most important person that you can have involved in this kind of situation is a person called a geriatric care manager. Um, and I, I, they are, this is an increasingly large field uh, of people typically who are former social workers or, or, or nurses who have gotten involved in specializing in helping elders to figure out what their care needs are and how to navigate the system. So I guess my, my kind of broad observation on this is if you don't know a geriatric care manager, you ought to get to know one. If you want a couple of names, we can give you some names, but you can just go search or just go Google under geriatric care managers and you'll find people in this area. They can help you try to figure this out. And among other things, if you're at the hospital and you're trying to persuade the hospital and the doctor at the hospital that you need to stay there, they're your best advocates. Because typically they have nurse train, a nurse background and training. Often they know the play people at the hospital. They can help you to deal with that. They can also help you figure out uh, in term, if, if you are going home, how to figure out what that package of services is that you're going to need at home. And I know we're going to have Joyce talk about that in a few minutes as far as the ASAP is concerned, but it's really, really an important concept. Geriatric care managers, and, and they know that appeal system much better than any lawyer does, and they're a lot cheaper than lawyers are. I hate to be kind of mentioning that piece. So, if you're going from hospital to home, suppose you, you know, Frank's been at the hospital for a few days, and he's being discharged to home, and we're trying to figure out what is going to happen when Frank gets home. Well, what's Frank going to need at home? Is he going to need nurses? Is he going to need home health aides? The plan, his discharge plan initially, is going to be, well, there's going to be a general doctor's discharge plan, which is coming from the hospital, right? Um, but then, when he gets home, what they're typically going to say is, go talk to the nurse. 
we're going to, as part of our plan, we're going to agree that the Visiting Nurses Association, right, or, or a, uh, another certified home, a home health entity that's certified by Medicare, is going to go to your home and figure out the services that you need while you're at home. Um, and and, and one, there is one key part of that that you need to appreciate. Um, those home services uh, at home that you get from the Visiting and Nurses Association um, can literally go forever. They can go forever as long as while you're at home you need skilled care. If you need the services of a nurse, physical therapist, occupational therapist, if you need professionals to be coming in, then Medicare will pay for that. The reason why I want to emphasize that is that this, th th that is what the Medicare law always said, but that is not what Medicare always did. Until very recently, Medicare had taken the position, or Medicare's contractors had, that if you were at home and you were getting the service, th these kinds of skilled services, and you, and you were no longer progressing, you were no longer, quote unquote, getting better, or you had plateaued, that's often the term you'll hear, plateaued. If you had plateaued, they cut those services off. Right? There was a recent case called Jimmo versus Sibelius. Jimmo versus Sibelius, in which um, a group from uh, uh, Connecticut called the Center for Medicare Advocacy sued Medicare to say that's not what the Medicare law says, and they won. And as a result of that, nationally now, and starting just this year, um, the Medicare is taking the position that as long as you continue to need the skilled, ser the skilled care services, you can continue to get those services at home and get them paid for by Medicare. If you're having trouble with that, or if you're having trouble with Medicare or with the VNA, once again, that's a natural role for your geriatric care manager to be playing, to help you kind of figure that out. So um, you're at home, you're dealing with all these issues, and the, and the question is, so what other services are available? Joyce, can you talk to th these folks for a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. In this kind of situation, so Frank's at home and he's not doing great, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he's going to be staying at home. What, what, what kinds of things are around? 